Uh, can you see my screen? Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Thanks. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, uh, based on where you are. Uh, my name is Yashwan Bamakanti, and I'm a senior product manager here with Palo Alto Networks, working on uh, SASE solution for managed service providers and distributed enterprises. What we'll be going through today, going over today, would be um, we'll just kick it off by going over at a very high level for context what SASE is and how we at Palo Alto Networks approach SASE. And if you are uh, trying to actually uh, uh, have a SASE deployment across your organization as a distributed enterprise, or uh, if you are if you're a managed service provider and you're looking to actually um, uh, have a service for your customers based on uh, SASE by Palo Alto Networks, how do you approach it? What kind of functionalities that we have as a platform? And what are we doing uh, to actually enable you to be successful in your journey with SASE? So to begin with, we are uh, in market trends that are driving convergence. Uh, we do see that um, majority of the workforce, uh, more than 76% of the employees want to work in a hybrid environment, whether it is working from home or working um, or working at distance look at distant locations. And when, when the employees are working in a, in a hybrid environment, they are trying to access applications which are now becoming more and more dynamic. Uh, the days of one data center or a few data centers hosting all the applications are completely gone where uh, the applications sometimes are in cloud, sometimes they are in private clouds, sometimes they are in data centers. So the applications can be anywhere. And users are now tend to be uh, everywhere as well. And that is where um, any user trying to connect to any application is actually expanding the attack surface significantly. And moreover, uh, branches are again, um, uh, also going through transformation, going through digital transformation to be able to support this kind of a hybrid environment. This is what is driving the convergence of actually the networking and the security solutions uh, to actually have one consistent solution that can actually offer uh, one solution for any user connecting to any application, provide consistent security, but at the same time, also make sure that all the users are getting the consistent application, secu application experience without losing the performance. And that is what we actually excel at Palo Alto Networks, where we seamlessly within one platform are able to bring in our security, networking as a service, while keeping in mind the best of user, best in class user experience. Uh, we have one platform where we have converged our security, which is delivered through our cloud delivered uh, Prisma Access, networking through our Prisma SD WAN and uh, user experience with tools like insights and autonomous digital experience management. Along with that, what we have also introduced, um, uh, and this has been in um, uh, used by our customers today, is a platform that actually enables you to have hierarchical multi-tenancy, uh, open API support for both analytics and configuration management, license flexibility uh, so that when you have multiple tenants you are able to actually give them separate licenses based on the requirement of the tenant and comprehensive role-based access control uh, in an msp environment this can be utilized for uh, a fully managed or a co-managed uh, kind of a deployment uh, whereas in a distributed enterprise this could be uh, 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 this can be utilized uh, to actually give access to specific tenants based on the requirements of the tenant with this one platform no matter where the user is and no matter where the applications are, we are able to provide consistent security with one platform with the best in class user experience. Now, uh, if I just take a step uh, towards the managed services and why having one vendor SASE actually helps uh, a managed services um, uh, a partner or uh, someone who's trying to do managed services using SASE. Uh, when you're trying to actually set up a service that is as complex as SASE, where you have multiple components coming together, uh, 
uh, you have multiple tasks at your hand. First is you have to integrate, assemble, <clears throat> and build the whole solution. You have to integrate multiple different products uh, or multiple different use uh, products that serve different use cases, and you have to build the whole solution together. Uh, the next part is once you're able to do that, you have to now deploy and manage this whole solution, uh, uh, which is comprising of different components to serve different use cases. And the same thing you have to do on a day to a day two to day end basis, which is you are now having to operate and monitor all of these different solutions together. Where this adds complexity is you have all of these use cases and you have these point products that are serving these use cases and what you come across as a, a, a partner who is trying to integrate all of this into one solution is you have feature gaps between one vendor to the other vendor uh, you have feature overlaps sometimes uh, and you have comp a configuration complexity because each product is designed on its own and you have fragmented architecture because now you have all of these point products trying to solve these different use cases, but they don't work with each other uh, seamlessly. Now, this becomes even more uh, problematic in a deploy and manage um, a step where you have different scale capacities of each of the solutions. Um, there is no common tenancy model, which is you're trying to have a service for each customer and uh, there is no one tenancy model. One product could have one tenancy model, the other product could support it in a different way and that causes complexity for you. And then there is a whole um, uh, another headache of actually doing licensing separately and um, are trying to work with different types of licensing for different types of products. And this becomes even more um, uh, complex for operation uh, for monitoring and managing it on a on a day to end day to to day end basis because now you have different planes of glass uh, you have uh, uh, limited visibility sometimes and you have sometimes overlapping visibility um, you have uh, uh, no clear um, uh, uh, correlation between the data coming from these different products and this is where we actually are able to give you one holistic solution where you are able to get all of the security and the networking capabilities that you need uh, for a complete SASE deployment in one platform. We come with one common tenancy model and uh, a simple uh, licensing structure that gives you enough flexibility. Uh, and one single pane of glass for monitoring and managing the whole of the application lifecycle and the whole of the uh, user experience so that you are not uh, required to actually go to multiple places to be able to actually do the management of your service. With this, you can significantly reduce your time to market and uh, at the same time also have this um, uh, easy, flexible, easy to deploy flexible service for your customers. And with this kind of a, a, a solution, you have now the flexibility to actually go and target multiple different markets, which is uh, you can actually go to a multinational company or a large enterprise where you can add on these services based on their requirement. Um, and uh, uh, you can package these uh, package these different products that we have with Prisma Access or package these different services with Prisma Access and Prisma SD1 and have a complete uh, 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 SASE service in your portfolio. Um, let's take a little bit of a deep dive into what kind of uh, a multi what is the multi tenancy that we are talking about here, right? So, um, in the platform itself, you have the ability to actually set up multiple tenants based on your requirement. Now, uh, this could be a tenant uh, in, a, in a managed services kind of a use case. This could be a tenant for your um, different customers in different regions. Or uh, if you are a distributed enterprise, you can look at it as a different BU that needs a separate access or that needs to be separate, needs to have separate policy, needs to have separate logging. Um, uh, one of the examples is also that we have seen very commonly is mergers and acquisitions where they need to be a separate tenant and uh, but you need to have a global control over this particular tenant um, you can have the you can um, uh, consider the uh, multi tenant approach where you are able to create multiple tenants and um, this is a hierarchical model so it's not a flat tenancy structure you can have many levels uh, based on your requirement and there is no practical limit in terms of how many uh, tenants you can actually have in this platform now once you have a tenant 
let's understand what a tenant actually means. Uh, we refer to tenant as a tenant service group. And the reason for that is that a particular tenant can have one or many services running within it. Uh, one tenant could be requiring um, a, a, a security service only. One tenant could be requiring a security and networking service, which is a complete SASE. Uh, one tenant could uh, have more security add-ons compared to the other tenants. Like for example, one tenant could have DLP um, and uh, uh, SaaS in line, whereas the, uh, the other tenant could only have ADEM or Autonomous Digital Experience Management. So you have the flexibility to actually set up and orchestrate based on what the tenant actually needs in this platform. And each tenant that you spin up is actually a completely unique environment, which is uh, its own uh, instance of Prisma Access and its own instance of uh, a logging. So all of the tenant um, is completely isolated from the second tenant. So there is no cross data, uh, 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 cross tenant data at all uh, that you need to be worrying about. Similarly, uh, from uh, 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 as I uh, mentioned, the licensing perspective, each tenant, you have the ability to actually set up uh, a tenant with its own license as well, so that it can have different capabilities based on the requirement. Now coming to APIs. Um, uh, the APIs, again, uh, we have uh, launched the AP centralized API gateway service which essentially gives you uh, API gateways at different locations based on where you are so that you get the least uh, latency when you're querying the APIs. And when we talk about APIs, we don't just talk about exposing some metrics on the API or some analytics on the API. We actually have a complete set of APIs that are enabling you to do complete end-to-end -end, uh, um, uh, automation of the entire deployment. Uh, which starts from the operational aspects like activations and um, uh, uh, allocations of licenses all the way until configuration of the components and monitoring the components. So you're able to actually uh, uh, set up an end-to-end -end automation for your entire service based on what the, what the tenant needs. You're able to set up the licenses, you are able to um, uh, activate the tenant and then configure the tenant and monitor it from day end perspective. Uh, these are all RESTful JSON-based APIs, um, uh, and uh, they have granular role-based access control. And these role-based access controls are the same role-based access controls that you can set up for your users, uh, which actually start at the tenant level, where, uh, where a particular service account for an API or a user could be given access to only one um, a tenant or multiple tenants. And at the same time, within that tenant, you can specify what application is this particular ID or a username or uh, a user can actually query or uh, send API requests for. Um, we have global gateways, uh, global API gateways for uh, effective load balancing. And all of this is all coming from one uh, platform. So you don't have to query multiple platforms for these APIs, giving you one simple um, secure and scalable API framework to actually integrate uh, this whole solution into your backend systems or into your automation uh, workflows. Now coming to licensing, how do we approach licensing? And we talked about the flexible licensing. How do we approach that? Uh, we actually have multiple different ways of licensing the product, licensing inside this multi-tenant platform. Um, uh, so first, first and foremost is that you have the ability to actually uh, purchase a different license for each tenant that you onboard. Now, let me break down the scenario a little bit. If you, have, if you are a managed service provider, as an example, um, and you have the first tenant coming in today, uh, coming in, uh, in in a month, you have the ability to purchase a license and uh, take that license based on what the tenant requires and allocate it to the tenant and activate the tenant. If you have another tenant coming up in the next three months, you are able to actually purchase another license and then allocate that license to that particular tenant as well. So similar to this, you can have multiple licenses based on when your tenants come in, you can do the just-in-time provisioning of that tenant. Now, the second licensing model that we also support is 
the ability to purchase one big license as a central license and uh, take that license and allocate it to multiple tenants. As an example, uh, you can purchase a 5,000 user license and you are able to actually um, uh, spin up your first tenant with the 500 users, second tenant with 1,000 users, et cetera. Um, as a distributed enterprise, you also have the same options, obviously, but you have uh, you, you, the way to think about it from your perspective is that uh, if you are a global company and uh, you want to have multiple tenants, uh, either for your BUs or your different organizational units, um, uh, you can have this one license that you want to purchase across your company and you can distribute that across your tenants. Even though you're using the same license to orchestrate multiple tenants, you still get, every time you create a tenant, you still get a completely unique environment of its own and a unique storage of its own. You are also able to actually add users that only have access to those tenants as well. Now, coming from a uh, coming to a SASE perspective, uh, we have multiple different licensing tiers and licensing options. You have your security only license that gives you um, uh, security services. And that comes into mul in multiple flavors, which is business, business premium, uh, zero trust network access, and uh, secure internet gateway. Uh, you have your networking services, which is our SD-WAN licenses, uh, our Prisma SD-WAN licenses. And you have your bundle licenses where you can actually purchase both Prisma access and SD-WAN. And from an add-ons perspective, we have multiple add-ons. We have uh, autonomous digital experience management. Uh, we have data loss prevention. Uh, we have IoT and we have SaaS, SaaS security inline option as well as an add-on. Right. With that, um, from a managed services perspective, uh, you have this entire platform and a central API gateway that actually gives you um, uh, uh, the complete multi-tenant cloud management platform that not just gives you the aggregated visibility, uh, but also lets you do the whole end-to-end -end management of the uh, different, uh, different services that you're spinning up per tenant. Uh, but at the same time, gives you a role-based control panel uh, to, over to your tenants based on what they need. Uh, comes with flexible licensing and uh, tenant and identity access management. With all of these uh, uh, services that are provided by the platform and your expertise of actually providing um, uh, providing connectivity, um, uh, program and project management, architecture design and deployment operations, and your knock and sock capabilities, you uh, the enterprises that you're serving can get one single enterprise uh, integrated um, offer by Palo Alto Networks that reduces the complexity of deployment, uh, has flexible management options, and uh, gives you fast deployment, uh, faster deployment in the form of a solution uh, so that you have faster time to market and you're able to actually deliver service with much better, um, uh, with much better uh, SLAs. With that, uh, we are, uh, uh, I'd like to conclude uh, by saying we are truly unified uh, SASE at scale uh, that gives you consistent tools for operational integration and visibility and uh, flexible and customizable service creation that enables flexible and customizable service creations.